Hi, it's Alaska Granny. I've been to the lower 48 and of course that includes a trip to the Dollar Tree. If you've watched my videos before, you may know that there are no Dollar Trees in Alaska and when I go outside and visit my family in the lower 48, I like to go to the Dollar Tree and load up treasures in my suitcase and bring them back. They're that good of a deal. It's worth bringing an extra room in your suitcase. The first thing I noticed was there were a lot of empty shelves, but it's still not impossible to stock up and still add to your prepper pantry and your long-term food storage. You want to remember to have grab-and-go foods, say for your bug out bag, keep them in your car, have some emergency snacks. So the few of the things that I bought to have in the car for my grandkids were some eight packs of cookies, a three pack of Yahoo chocolate milk, four packs of juice, and some of the little fruit cups. Now what I noticed about the applesauce cups, for example, was they used to have a six pack and now they're a four pack. And that, my friends, is shrinkflation. The sizes of products are becoming smaller and smaller is the only way they can keep the price the same. It's the same thing as the price is going up. If they gave you the same pack, it would be a dollar fifty, but then it wouldn't be at the Dollar Tree. They have to use smaller packaging for it to have the same price. Think about having some extra food in your car, in your bug out bag, in a grab and go bag that you have next to your door. If you're heading out, take some snacks with you and make sure you also have some water. Luckily at the Dollar Tree, you can still stock up on water. The next strategy for shopping at Dollar Tree and adding to your prepper pantry stockpile is easy open and eat foods. Foods that you can have in your pantry that don't require any cooking, maybe a little heating up. But in an emergency, if you couldn't heat it up, it's still ready to eat. Food in a can. Some of the foods that were available were SpaghettiOs, beef stew, chili, beefaroni and they even had a can of ravioli that was with chicken ravioli which I've never even seen before. They also have some easy to open pouch meals from Saffron Road. There's a chickpea masala and some deli potatoes. There were a few varieties of Campbell's soup and some healthy choice vegetable soups and they also had canned vegetables. The thing about the canned vegetables though, you can probably find them somewhere else for less than the one dollar. But not always. Prices are going up. And so if you are just at that store and you need a few extras, go ahead and pick them up. We can't always pay the cheapest price for the things that we need. Sometimes we pay a few cents more and later on we'll find something that's a few cents less and it all evens out. Dollar cost averaging into your prepper pantry. Dollar Tree also had some Kraft macaroni and cheese. They had some other varieties, but I prefer the Kraft, and so that's the choice of my family. And the Hungry Jack dehydrated hash brown potatoes were available, and those have been difficult to find. Those are already dehydrated, but they come in a cardboard type carton. So if you want them to last longer, you want to store them into something like a clean canning jar. The better you store food, the longer it lasts. So if you buy something like dehydrated potatoes, put them into something like a clean jar and tighten the lid. Then if you have a vacuum sealer, that's great. You can suck out the oxygen with that. Some super dry foods, you can use oxygen absorbers, but those are for foods with, that are extremely dry, like rice and beans, not foods with high moisture or high oil content. Canned meats at the Dollar Tree were getting in short supply. But they did still have some sardines, they had some canned chicken, cans of tuna, and look at the luncheon loaf. It's shrinkflation again. It's down to seven ounces. Normally when we buy things like treat meat or luncheon meat or even spam, they usually have a 12 ounce can. They still have luncheon meat available at the Dollar Tree, but it's a smaller size can. But if you went to, say, Walmart to buy a can of Spam, it's nearly $4. So you're still getting a really good deal on the little cans of luncheon meat, luncheon loaf, if it's something that you enjoy eating. Don't buy foods you don't want to eat. It's a waste of money and your valuable prepper pantry space. So only stock up on foods that you know how to cook, you're willing to eat, and you're willing to rotate it and replace them. Otherwise, you're wasting your grocery dollars. They were a little bit thin on the spices, but there's still ways to pick them up. I like buying the spices at the Dollar Tree. 
I like the small size container because they stay fresh longer if you're only opening up a small amount rather than getting a gigantic container of spices. You can open it up and it's fresher longer if it still remains sealed. Spices don't really expire, they become less fragrant, less aromatic. And if you want to know if your spices are still fresh, go ahead and crush them a little bit or add a little pinch of them into some boiling water and see if you can smell the aroma. Sometimes it fades, you can just add more and you'll still be able to achieve the success that you want with the spices that you have on hand. Other dry ingredients that they had at the Dollar Tree were a wide variety of instant oatmeals in the pouches. They also had some grits, some packs of granola, quick oats, big boxes of cereal. Look how big these cereal boxes are and there's several different varieties and they're only one dollar. When I've gone to the store and looked for cereal in Alaska, it's far more expensive than that. It's many dollars more. They're three, four, five dollars for a box of cereal in Alaska. Of course, only buy cereal that you want to eat. You can store it better in a Mylar bag for it to last a little bit longer, but because it has so many ingredients in it, cereal is going to become stale. So don't plan on storing it for, say, 25 years. It really isn't possible to extend the life that long. But if there's cereal that you like, get enough so that you could eat it within a year or two and then rotate it and replace it. They also have shelf-stable milk at the Dollar Tree, the Gosner milk, which is very good. It can live in your pantry unopened. I've even stored a few in the bottom of my refrigerator and I went to open them. They were a year out of date and they were still just as fresh as can be. Dollar Tree also had some of the Nor size, which are good. Lots of times you can find them for a dollar, but I've noticed that the price is going up above a dollar. So if you can still find them for that, it might be something you want to add to your long-term food storage. I store multiples of them into uh, like five gallon buckets and I just stuff them in there and add the lid and I've had them last for four or five years. That's when I've begun to rotate them again and I haven't ever had one that wasn't good to eat, but I didn't put it in there for 25 years. You have to remember that your food needs to be rotated. Not all food is gonna last forever. Dollar Tree also had some vacuum sealed coffee. So if you're a coffee drinker, you might wanna look for that and think about adding some to your stockpile. If you want coffee to last the longest though, try to find some freeze dried or instant coffee. Instant coffee doesn't seem to expire and you can have that last for practically forever if you want that to be a part of your prepper pantry and your long-term food storage. If you're looking for the very longest lasting foods, you can still find those at the Dollar Tree too. They have beans and rice. There were pinto beans and black beans. They also had rice. They have white rice and brown rice. The white rice can store for practically forever, but brown rice cannot because it has a high oil content. You can have it in your food storage, but think of it as short-term or medium-term lifespan. You need to rotate it within a year or two or three, whereas you can store and stockpile lots of dried beans, lots of dried white rice, and you can have that last nearly forever. Dollar Tree had quinoa, they had packages of oatmeal, packages of pasta, and those are also foods that you can store to last for many, many years. They had white vinegar again, which I hadn't seen in a while, and I checked to make sure, and yes, it's still 32 ounces, it's still 5% acidity. It's a different brand of vinegar, but it still is the same amount and the same acidic value. So it's something you should stock up on if vinegar is something that you use. Vinegar is great to use in all kinds of cleaning, in your laundry and household cleaning and drain cleaning even. So it's good to have some extra vinegar on hand. Plus if you decide you want to get into preserving and pickling foods, vinegar is something you're going to need. Dollar Tree had lots of pasta. You could store it into a Mylar bag. You could put it in a five gallon bucket. You could put it in a clean canning jar. You could even vacuum seal it or use oxygen absorbers to help your pasta last longer. But egg noodles have eggs in them, so they are not considered a long-term food. So it's nice to have egg noodles for a variety with say tuna casseroles, things like that, but don't be storing egg noodles like you would pasta. 
What made it into my suitcase? Jerky. Lots of different varieties of jerky. I checked that there were lots of different flavors, lots of varieties. They have a long lasting date. The dates are out there quite a ways. And with a variety of flavors, it can help you avoid food fatigue. These are nice. You could add them into top ramen. You could add them into other kinds of noodle dishes. You can just snack on them. And you can have these for grab and go, just open and eat. You have another source of protein in your food storage. So whether you want food for your bug out bag, something to keep in your car, or something to have in your pantry, jerky is a nice option. I bought more of the Imperial Nuts, the protein blend. These have the more fruit and fewer nuts in them. And I found that the ones that were primarily nuts seemed to go rancid, whereas the fruit one did not. I've opened these and eaten them a year past their date and they were still perfectly fine. If one or two of the nuts didn't taste very good anymore, you could throw away one or two nuts out of your package of dried fruit, but you didn't have to then throw out the entire package of nuts because they had gone rancid. These didn't have that problem. I bought a package of Saffron Road Chickpea Masala. It's an easy grab and go meal. You can heat it in the microwave. You could get a pot of boiling water, put this in there and heat it up, then tear it open and eat it. But if you had no way to heat it up, it's still okay because it's already fully cooked. These kind of pouches are nice because they're super sturdy and the food lasts quite a long time in them. And they usually have a little window on the bottom so you can see what it looks like read the ingredients and the nutrition on the back because some of them might be ingredients that maybe you're not familiar with you might want to try it if it's something you've never tried you're not sure if you'd like it get one take it home and try it and if you like it go back and get more i found some little snack packs by fruta which i'd never seen before the first one is mini bars of pumpkin seeds and nuts and the other one is mini bars with peanuts so of course if you have peanut allergies you wouldn't want that one I like these because they have no preservatives, no artificial color, they're gluten free, and they're high in protein. If you look on the back, a serving size is three pieces and there's three servings, which would mean there's going to be nine little snacks in each package. There's three servings of 170 calories each, so each pack is going to have 510 calories per pack. If you're looking at ways to make sure you're getting enough calories in your emergency food, this would be a good option if it's something you like. Once again, take one home and try it. If you like it, you can always go back and get more. I actually bought a package of egg noodles simply because they're so expensive here. And I couldn't believe they're only a dollar. I just had to reach out and grab one and put it directly into my cart. But remember, egg noodles can't last as long as other noodles, so make sure that you're rotating them and using them up. They had one pound bags of popcorn, which is a long lasting food. And I've already placed it into a jar simply because the bag got a little hole in it through transit. Popcorn can last forever, but don't add things like oxygen absorbers because it has moisture in each kernel and that's what helps it to pop. This is still bubble wrap so it wouldn't break in my suitcase. And it's a little jar of paste bacani sauce because I like to put together shelf meals where I take a Ziploc bag and I put all the ingredients in them for a meal. And if you want to make a meal that includes hot sauce, these nice little jars are the perfect size to use with your shelf meals. Because if you have a big jar and you only want a half of it, then in an emergency you may not be able to refrigerate the other half and we don't want it to go to waste. So depending on what your needs are and how much space you have and if you have refrigeration, things like that, it's nice sometimes to have smaller containers that are already sealed up to last for several years. So pay attention to the dates on the food when you're buying it. I was interested in the small size salad dressings. I thought they would be good to put in my shelf meals. I was interested in the Italian dressing and look, it's already expired, it's out of date. Yet you can look at the chicken and it clearly has a long lasting shelf life on it, which makes it an even better bargain. They still had the one pound bags of Himalayan salt, which definitely pick this up. It's high quality salt. You'll see it at all of the other grocery stores for four to five dollars a bag and they still have it for one dollar at Dollar Tree. Salt is something that historically has always been valuable, always been useful. It is only today 
that we have foods that are so overly processed and overly prepared and instant that it has too much sodium in it. But when it comes to doing your own basic cooking, you'll need to have some salt. Salt is also a great way to help preserve your foods for the future. The spice and seasoning shelves were a little bare, but I did find still some of the ones that I prefer. So I got some parsley flakes, some garlic powder, basil leaves, cayenne pepper, ground paprika, and oregano. And I stocked up on parchment paper. Parchment paper is great to use in, say, cast iron baking because you line your pan, bake your cornbread, and then it's easy, nothing sticks to it. It's also nice to line baking sheets. Things don't stick to it, and then you have less cleanup. And if you come to a time when you're either camping, you're off-grid living, or the power and the water go out for some reason, this would be very useful to not have to use your precious water to wash the dishes. I can't forget my dog Teddy. I got him some treats, a few new toys, and he loves them when they squeak. I got him an extra little baby blanket. For one dollar I have an extra fleece blanket to help snuggle and cuddle my little dog. Finally they had leashes in again, so I bought a few extra leashes, one to keep with my to-go bag, one to keep in the car, one to keep just wherever. It's nice to have extra leashes for your dog. In an emergency, you don't want your dog getting loose. You might even keep one by your bed in case you have to evacuate in the middle of the night. You can clip it on the dog's collar and then you can make sure that he's with you in times of emergencies. Is it important to still be prepping and adding to your food stockpile? Absolutely. Even if you only have one extra dollar, every time you go to the store, buy something extra to add to your prepping supplies. You can buy some food, you could buy water, some tools, first aid supplies, hygiene supplies, all of the categories of things that you need. Look around in the store and think, how could I use that? How could it help make my life easier? And next thing you know, you'll have a little at a time, you'll have built up your supplies so that you'll have all the things that you need. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.